Learning Objective 2-5, make calculations and prepare basic consolidation entries for a simple consolidation. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go start off account consolidation. And um, we have a very simple setting here where the subsidiary is wholly owned and it is a created or we purchased it for a certain amount that's equal to the book value of the net assets. So there's no write-ups and write-downs here, and um, it's fully owned, and it, there's no non-controlling interest. <clears throat> and um, in Chapter 3, what we're going to do is we're going to do partially owned with the non-controlling interest. Chapter 4, we're going to do write-ups only. And then Chapter 5, we're going to do partially owned with the non-controlling interest and with the write-ups with differential. So your objective here is to take the two companies and combine them to present financial statements as if it was one company. And it's not pooling. Remember, pooling, I said, is one company all along. We start consolidating when the acquisition takes place. Before there's an acquisition, there's nothing to consolidate. But under the old pooling method, what you would do is you'd actually consolidate for as many years as you present your financial statements, regardless of whether the companies were actually one comp, whether they had actually com acquired or not. So we only start consolidating as of the date of the acquisition under ac modern acquisition accounting. And the worksheet that we're going to prepare helps to combine these two companies. And what we really want to do is we want to eliminate the double counting that we would sometimes have. If you just added two sets of financial statements together, there's naturally going to be some double counting. And the purpose of the elimination entries is to eliminate that. So let's start off with a very simple consolidation, a basic 100% consolidation, and only the balance sheet. Peerless acquired 100% of Special Foods for $300,000. And here are, on the date of acquisition, um, this is January 1st, so there's no revenues or expenses yet to worry about. These are the balance sheets of the two companies. It's all in thousands. I did that to keep everything simple. The journal entry to make the acquisition would, on the books of Peerless, would be to debit investment in special foods for three hundred thousand dollars and it's all in thousands so I'm going to divide by a thousand and credit cash for three hundred and by the way this is sort of a model example we're going to use the same example throughout the semester and then we have these two balance sheets here now if you remember assets I hope you remember <laughs> assets are um, debits and liabilities in stockholders equity or credits <clears throat> so what you would do is you would take your two debits here the debited the assets for peerless the assets for special and you would add those you would also add any debits and you would subtract any credits in order to get your consolidated numbers so kind of the way this would happen is that you would have plus 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 your debits minus your credits equals the consolidated numbers. So this is kind of how things are going to add across. So anything that you add here to the debits is going to be added and anything that you subtract for the credits is going to be subtracted. Now <clears throat> Liabilities in stockholders equity are credits. So accounts payable, for example, is a credit, whether it's peerless or special. So if you debit those, then that will be subtracting from it. And if you credit those, it'll be adding. So for the right for the liabilities in stockholders equity section, it's going to be plus plus minus plus equals this. Again, the way the worksheet works is plus 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 the debits minus the credits equals a consolidated column. And then for liabilities in stockholders equity be plus plus minus plus equals the consolidated column. And that's how this is going to add across. So there's really just two things that we have to take care of here. And we're going to eliminate investment in special foods by crediting it. And we're going to eliminate that against the common stock and retained earnings of the sub. So 
the investment should be equal to since there was no differential here. There was no write-ups, write-downs, or goodwill. We're going to credit the investment account and we're going to debit common stock and retained earnings of the sub. And I'll make that yellow. There's one more thing to do. And that's going to be to eliminate accumulated depreciation because even though the buildings and equipment have book value of 300000 and the market value is also 300000 there's no room anymore for accumulated depreciation because if we bought just bought the asset, then it's to peerless, it's a new asset. It's not a $600,000 asset with 300000 accumulated depreciation. Peerless is buying the asset. So... It's a $300,000 asset, so I've got to eliminate accumulated depreciation. So I'm going to debit accumulated depreciation, and I'm going to credit buildings and equipment for $300,000. Like so. And then when I add across, it's going to be for the asset side, plus, 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 minus the credits, all the way down. And for the liabilities in stockholders' equity, it's going to be plus, plus, minus the debits, plus the credits, like so. And then we add up the debits and credits to make sure that they're equal. We add up our assets. And we add up our liabilities in stockholders' equity. And we make sure that they're equal. So debits equal credit, 600. Assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity, 1300. And there you have a consolidation. So in the next section now, we're going to go to the next year and do a more complete consolidation, including the income statement and the statement of stockholders equity.